The Comprehensive Center for Brain Health, or CCBH, is a transdisciplinary group of people who've come together from diverse backgrounds and training to understand what constitutes healthy brain aging and what puts us at risk for neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. CCBH is dedicated to advancing our understanding of brain aging and optimizing cognitive function. And I think what is truly noteworthy about CCBH is that it takes this interdisciplinary approach to understanding brain aging. CCBH includes neurologists, nurse practitioners, data scientists, epidemiologists, urban planners, neuropsychologists, physical therapists, social workers, all coming together to address this important health issue. We're really focusing on brain health and how to prevent the onset of dementia through, you know, performing research on ways to kind of maintain brain health, uh, reduce risk, maintain and increase resilience. So resilience is the concept of what makes an organism less likely to manifest symptoms of disease, even if there are already changes happening. We really try to understand what are the factors that put people either at higher risk of disease or lower risk of disease? And the way we measure that is through this concept of resilience and vulnerability. I'm interested in understanding sources of risk and resilience in cognitive aging. And more recently, I've been diving into this world of epigenetics. And I think this area is well noted for the development of these biological age clocks. And essentially, these age clocks are based on this, measuring this epigenetic mechanism called DNA methylation. And so I've taken these biomarkers because I think they can be really useful. And I've looked at things like how does rate of aging indexed by these clocks relate to cognitive aging and differences in cognitive aging. My interest is in looking at whether early markers of physical dysfunction such as sarcopenia have value in um, identifying individuals at increased risk for cognitive impairments. Also by using machine learning uh, approaches to uh, the analysis of gait data, we uh, have found that uh, lower performance on dual task gait or accurately um, uh, discriminates individuals with mild cognitive impairment and, and cognitive impairment in general from those who are cognitively uh, normal. So all of these taken you know, together um, indicate sarcopenia and other early markers of physical dysfunction as valuable tools in uh, early uh, detection of cognitive impairment. My main research focus is identifying neurobehavioral markers of neurodegeneration and how we can use those to better identify and measure cognitive impairment in its earliest stages. We can really focus on the non-intentional markers using artificial intelligence and machine learning. And these kind of non-intentional markers might be things like how someone looks across the page and do they have regular or irregular patterns of their gaze? Do they use the same words over and over again? Or do they use very complex or very simple words? And we can use all of these using things like natural language processing, very detailed analyses with the gaze behavior. And this can really identify very subtle markers of impairment. So my work focuses on the places where we live, learn, work, play, worship, how those environments influence our health behaviors and exposures across our life course, and how that can ultimately impact our risk for Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. With urban density comes greater air pollution, sometimes more traffic, increased stress from noise and those types of things and those have been associated with kind of negative mental health and cognitive health effects. Conversely, green spaces kind of are the opposite of that. So green spaces and urban environments may provide respite from those um, kind of environments that we experience in urban areas. We have researchers from across numerous disciplines all intent on pushing the field forward and I think that's really exciting to be a part of. The future of CCBH is bright. We are thinking about how we're going to address this problem on an individual by individual basis that we can apply it to every person regardless of their race, ethnicity, language, genetics, background. What we're looking is an approach to the person as a whole. 
What we want to do is build a better brain and build a better you.